Hey, Jared here, development update number eight. I uh, thought I'd catch up, seeing as how it's been a couple of weeks, and we had the house under contract last time I spoke. The uh, house contract is still just a fraction conditional. I did a FaceTime with the purchasers on late last week, and we worked out uh, exactly what was going on with them, what was holding them up. Um, they really don't need it conditional, they just need a guarantee from us that we're gonna create the title and not just walk away with their deposit. Um, so yeah, we've basically set up a bit of an agreement in the contract which says if we don't issue the title, we give them the deposit back and um, they give us the house back the way they found it. So that'll be uh, a really undesirable outcome, but at least they're protected and what they're worried about is kind of taken care of. Other than that, they're really happy they can complete and they're happy with their funds. They've sold their house. They have to move out in the really near future. So all that's looking really good. Um, yeah, uh, actual DA work. So the council application got stopped because Taz Water came back and said, hey, we need all this information. Um, basically, they wanted to know where we were gonna put everything and we hadn't finished our engineering concepts. So I rode the engineer as much as I could. Um, all engineers down here, all civil engineers, are rush off their feet. I tell you what, if you've got someone in year 12 looking to live in Launceston and just be busy for life, tell them civil engineering is the way to go. It's just, I mean, our guy's really good and he still just runs late on every deadline because he's got so much work on and so many jobs on and he gets a call here or a call there and he has to deal with that and there's nothing you can do. So we got our first draft through and there was a couple of small issues and we got our second draft through and it was really, really good, exactly what we wanted. Uh, we tweaked a couple of um, water and sewer lines so that we got bigger building areas on um, two or three of the blocks, particularly a couple of the more premium blocks that I really like with really, really good views. Um, we rejigged the road a little bit to kind of minimise the impact on one of the neighbours. I'll kind of talk about that a little bit actually. That neighbour has bought, he's recently bought the property, him and his family, and when they bought it, a whole big chunk of roadway easement uh, was fenced in. So that was essentially looking like part of their backyard. Now, they knew what was going on. They could see it on the title. So they were, they wanted to ideally buy the roadway easement from the council. Um, and part of that roadway easement is being used for our roadway. It's not actually legally speaking an easement, it's a chunk of title. Um, so the council keeps calling it a roadway reserve on the plans, but it's not their title. It's not an easement over their title. It's 15 meter wide chunk of land designed for a road. So we're using part of it, but we've deliberately designed to stay away from this area that they've kind of fenced in as much as possible. But for where our road comes up the side of our site and then turns into our site to where the cul-de-sac is, um, it really needed it. So yeah, we've, we've done the best to kind of minimize that, but that may become a bit of a sticking point at a later date. Um, the road itself, we had to do a bit of work on the contours, or the engineers, like it's the royal we, uh, had to do a bit of work on the contours, making sure that the road took as much of the contour out in, its, in the sort of run of the road rather than in the cul-de-sac because cul-de-sacs have to be really, really flat. Now, there are some new developments really close to ours where the cul-de-sacs are ridiculously slopey and don't comply at all. And they got approval. Hey, but we're trying to actually ask for approval for complying stuff in our case. We've got this funny thing about, you know, doing it right once and, you know, a bit of extra thought, a bit of extra work on paper, which is really, really cheap. Excavators not needed, you know, engineer he's not free but he's not as dear as an excavator and you know five or six men and a tip truck so we work it out as best as we can to use what's there so yeah I'm really happy with it the only downside at the moment is that we have to do a bit of engineering around our driveways and they're gonna have to be a little bit more complex than a standard subdivision and there'll be a little bit of cost in that but the upside for our um, the quality of what we're putting out and the upside for our product is really really good the market's moving with us which makes us feel a bit better too so that's all really good so that went back to the council on Wednesday and the council still haven't restarted the clock on our application so all of us are pretty much on the council's case um, going come on pull your finger out get the clock restarted we've complied with everything we need to comply with and now we're just really waiting for the council to come back with any further questions they have before they approve it um, they've got a few weeks to kind of get through that just due to the clock stoppage and you know a couple other issues that earlier on with the bushfire survey and that sort of stuff so they've got their time, and Taz Water, we're just waiting for them to come back and talk about what we've done. 
Uh, we've proposed possibly a sewer move at a later stage, but only if it really becomes an issue at this sort of earlier stage where we're saying we may do it, we're flagging it, but just consider it, we may not do it at all. It may give them the idea that maybe they want to get involved and really do something a bit more major while we're in there digging up the roads and digging up the works. Um, so, yeah, while our civil works are on, they could really, they could redo this massive sewer main that's just under spec completely. It's a 225 mil and it's just, it's running massive number of houses through it. Like this thing, this ring runs packed at like 11 o'clock in the morning when everyone's at work. It's just, yeah, it's not, it's an overworked sewer main. So they may decide to leverage our, um, our activity and get in there. But yeah, it's looking really good. It's really nice to see the plans in full colour, all ready to go. Lots of nice sort of detail, see where our pipes are going, where our power is going, where our fibre is going. And we can also go off to uh, TAS Networks now and get a price from them. So they've got a reputation for being really, really, really good or just really random and high. And so, yeah, I'm hoping they're on a good day. Um, TAS Water will hopefully give us a price to new hour. And I can also start getting onto all our civil works guys because with these concept plans in place, especially once we get the section done, which the engineer is working on this week, once we get the section done and the um, contractors can see what they have to cut and what they have to put in, um, yeah, we should be able to get some meterage for curbs, meterage for gutters, the amount of dirt that needs moving and all that sort of stuff. So we should be able to get some really good prices. So I'll keep you guys updated on that. But yeah, thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. Uh, like the page, add comments, even if it's just to say you watch. But if you've got any questions, feel free. And um, yeah, maybe subscribe to the YouTube channel. I've set up a playlist on there for all the development stuff. So if you do walk in kind of halfway through this, you can uh, link through to the development to the development playlist on um, YouTube and just watch them through in order. The intro's there and everything like that. So yeah, thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate your time. Cheers.